Okay, so here's an example of an artistic RenderWorks rendering. And this is a viewport on a sheet layer. So let's look at that. So there you go. It's a viewport on a sheet layer. Uh, let's start by going to the model and seeing how we got there. So here's the model in question. And a couple of things that I want to point out. Uh, first of all, I have these um, Entourage figures, these are symbols, <clears throat> and uh, they're in a collection of uh, silhouettes. They're just 2D, essentially, extrusions. They're symbols with an extrusion of zero. I have a class for Entourage, and they're in the Entourage class. And then if we look at this object, you can see that uh, if I click on this profile, it's a 3D polygon in the Entourage class, and in the render tab, you can see that I have a special custom RenderWorks texture called People Transparency. And so if the um, entourage people are too transparent or not transparent enough, I can just adjust the transparency of that one texture and it will change them all globally. And of course I could have a custom class for these, but I just put them in my uh, general entourage class. So I've got a, a Heliodon that's casting the shadows. And um, you'll notice that I've used the um, curtain wall tool to create this uh, screened in porch, uh, something that I do uh, quite a bit. And um, I think everything else is, is fairly straightforward. Uh, so what I did was I just um, uh, picked a view that I wanted, right? And then I just drew a rectangle on the screen plane. And then with that rectangle selected, uh, you can't see it, but it is selected in the object info palette. You can see there it is because it's on the screen plane and I'm in unified view with screen plane objects off. But with that rectangle selected, I'm just gonna go view and uh, create a viewport. I'll put it on a sheet layer. Um, I'll call it uh, rendering. I don't need to put a title on it, but just so I can keep track of things. And I'm going to turn off planar objects and 2D components because I just want the 3D geometry. And shaded is fine. I'll, I'll tinker with the settings in a minute. So I'll hit OK. And uh, there it is over here. You can see I've got a couple of other renderings already in place. So if I just update this uh, rendering, you'll see it looks like any other um, shaded rendering. Um, one thing I do want to point out is that I've upped the DPI of this uh, particular uh, sheet layer. It's at 200 DPI. I might even uh, bump it up to 300. Probably not necessary to go much higher than that. And so now let's look at the settings, how we can change these settings to get a more sort of a sketchy look. So um, under background render, we're going to go to the background render settings. It's shaded. I'm going to leave textures on because I want things like the transparency of my people image props or entourage symbols rather, and the transparency of the um, insect screening for the screen porch. I want to keep all that sort of texture, but I'm going to turn off the color setting. So it'll keep the textures, but it'll bleed all the colors out of them. And I'm not going to draw edges. I can go ahead and turn on my environment lighting and object reflections if I want. And uh, anti-aliasing is fine and definitely want shadow. So I'll hit OK, and then I'll update that, and you'll see that now it basically turns into sort of a black and white version of the same uh, rendering. So that's the, that's the background render in the Object Info Palette tab right here. Um, and that's a bit of a misnomer, background render and foreground render. It's really sort of a, an overlay. The foreground render is more of an overlay. It doesn't have to do with the depth of field of view. It's just you can have two rendering styles simultaneously for a design, a sheet layer viewport, excuse me. And you can um, set different re uh, rendering styles for the overlay and the underlay. So that might be a better way to think about this. So for the foreground la layer render, rather, I'm going to go with a hidden line. 
And then for my render settings, I'm going to go ahead and give myself a smoothing angle, say 45%, and uh, do a sketch hidden line results. And I have a custom uh, sketch style that I use called Confident. It's similar to certain, but I've just tweaked it a little bit. And um, so I'll go ahead and update. And you can see that now I have the shaded background, but now I have this sort of hidden line rendering of all the line work on top. But everything's different colors because of the classes that I use. So I'm going to go to my classes menu and just select all these classes, except for perhaps the none class. And then I'll edit those and just make the pen solid and the color say gray and say a 0.2 thickness. So whatever fill they have, each of these classes they stays unchanged, but I'm editing the line weight and the pen color. And you'll see that most of the things are now, when I update them, are going to uh, be this kind of, kind of gray line work. So now we're getting closer. And, uh, and here's a little trick. Uh, I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'll snap to the top left of this viewport and then draw that rectangle, say, to here, somewhere behind the ground. And I'll give that rectangle no uh, line around it. And instead of my class style, I'm going to give it a gradient fill. And I have a custom gradient that I created uh, that's uh, kind of a periwinkle at one end of the gradient and a pale yellow at the other end. And then I'll go ahead and um, uh, modify the uh, with the mapping tool. Where do I keep that? Attribute mapping. It's option A in my keyboard shortcut. So with the attribute mapping tool, I'm going to move this endpoint control point and put it here at the top and that control point and put it at the bottom. They don't have to be exactly aligned. In fact, it's kind of nice if it is slightly skewed to the left or to the right. And I'll take that rectangle and I'll send it to back. And then if I want a little more yellow on the horizon, then I can lift, um, you know, with the um, attribute mapping tool. I can uh, maybe pull that yellow up a little bit or pull, give myself more of a blue at the top. And so then finally, the last thing I'm going to do is in the object info palette for this viewport, at the very bottom, I'm going to add image effects. And then let's click on this image effects button. And there's some presets, black and white, sepia tint, warm and cool. And so here's sepia tint. It gives everything a sepia tint. I'll hit OK. And that's what that looks like. And then uh, you'll see that um, you can also edit these presets. And so I edited some of these sliders a little bit and I made a custom one. So the ones out of the box have the little angular brackets, but the one in parentheses, that's my own. So sepia deep shadows is slightly different. And then lastly, I'm gonna go back to my classes and highlight all these classes and uh, deselect the none class and edit that. And instead of gray, I'm just going to give them kind of a brown, sort of a sepia colored line, right? And update. Uh, and there you go. Um, that's, um, that's how I got that rendering to render that way. And it's always shaded, so it's, it's very, very fast.